and the scenery was beautiful and I really want to take a picture of myself. So I went to a camera shop and I tried to get a camera standard. Back then, as a full-time researcher, um, I don't have a lot of money to buy a tripod stand just for that purpose, right? So, but I come across this selfie stick and this was the first company that invented selfie stick. It, it was a patented thing by this company, right? I'm pretty sure they have got a lot out there, right, from all the um, company from all the fake products or muscle revenue. So anyway, so I saw this equipment. It was only about $30 compared to a tripod stand. To me, it has a strong value proposition. Right? It has a strong value. So I bought this product, right? And I began to take pictures of myself. Back then, nobody had used a selfie stick before. So everywhere I go, I hear people basically talking, right? And then there was once when I used this in Cambodia, I saw a whole group of tourists or I, it was in America, sorry. When I was in America, taking pictures of myself um, in front of the Statue of Liberty, I saw this, I almost hear this group of people swearing and, you know, like talking down that it's so silly of me to use this product, right? So, everybody had their own opinion. But the fact of the matter is, I never once doubt that this will be a product that took off. And sure enough, after a few years later, a lot of people use selfies too. Right? It becomes a common product. So, put away your emotions, what you think is a good product. Make sure, from now onwards, for every product that you guys come up with, always, always go back to the data. Be, they, be driven by data. Can that be a product that brings in income? Right? Like in the north, is that a profitable product? That underlies every good product to be right, in, in the market. So, that's a selfie stick. So the question, the second question that I want to address right, is this. So now, when I was working in Google, like the one of the biggest problems that engineers tend to make for many years when we were working together as a team, right, I remember mm -hmm. until to such an extent that the problem was so severe, the company has to bring us, have to send us to a professional training, right? That costs five thousand dollars each. But in that training, we learn basically nothing except the concept of. Are you designing things for yourself? Today, when you work as a team, when you come up with a project, ask yourself this question, right? Why are you developing this product? Is it because of your own personal need that drives you to create this product? Or are you, do you have any evidence that this is a need that is, needs to be solved by many other people in the world? Right? So the moment when you start to design for yourself, you are in for a problem because it is only for yourself. So in terms of product development, you can still see it every time when you go to, say, for example, a supermarket, if you look at all the products that's available that's done by mechanical engineers, there's no doubt that many products is basically inspired by self, right? Because they think that it is worth to include a Bluetooth. Are they think it's worthwhile to include an IR? Are they think that it is worth to include this feature? But the truth of the matter is, are these decisions supported by data? Is it data driven? So this is something that I want you guys to keep in mind with when you work as a team. Don't design for yourself because you're in for a big problem, right? So, how and where can we begin? Have you touched on this? A bit on um, this? Yeah, Probably yeah. a bit of an overlap. Pretty much it's an yeah. overlap, but it's, yeah. overlap. it's a yeah. very so, nice star up. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if you are a very passive person, there's nothing much we can do to help you because everything works fine, right? Um, but the basic simple fact that a remote controller a remote controller, a simple product like this has been invented is because that person don't even bother to walk three meters down to switch the channel. Right? And that must not be an active person. Right? So if you are a passive person and everything is fine, you can make do with everything. If you don't have a table, you can basically just take a cardboard and write on it. I mean if you have this sort of a person, maybe you'll find it very hard to come up with. Right. But the only way that will drive you in terms of to create innovation will be whether are you frustrated, frustrated enough about life. Right. So you need to be frustrated enough. Right. So, so I wasn't wrong by saying um, Charles and I are free critical and slightly pessimistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are very critical. Ah, being Okay. Now, so these are some of the feedbacks that have been given. We have done it for for two years now, and we are still trying to improve on the unit, right? And before I touch on some of the negative comments, I think it's worth really just 
putting us right on the same platform, right? So, um, thankfully, we received quite positive feedback, right? And I think Nick will show you some examples. I haven't talked about the MPR again. Oh, what about um, Samuel Clark's testimony? Yeah. You talked about it. So, you must have heard about Samuel Clark, the student. And, and to me, it just made complete sense. When he went for the interview, he managed to show the whole series of product development process to the employer. And I can tell you as a manager, as a previous employer for a company, any students who presented me to that, the entire whole process in product development will never fail to impress me. On the contrary, if a student can only talk about the theories that they learn in mechanics of solids or fluid mechanics, that will bore me to death. But Samuel Clark got the job, it's all because he's able to show and define very clearly what is the value proposition, why is there a market need for the product based on his research, how many people will need the product, what kind of profit it will bring in, what is his kind of a critical thinking, he's able to explain his critical thinking, he's able to explain his integrative thinking into the product, and to me, it makes complete sense why it has helped him to secure the job. And that is why we designed the course that way to help you guys to enhance your employability. And that is really the motivation behind it. So thankfully, we have about 4.5 on average in terms of people who like the course. Obviously, there will be about 10% of the students who don't really understand it. Maybe they didn't attend the first lecture. That's why we choose to make the first yeah. lecture compulsory. Yeah. Record it. And record it <laughs> so that you can hear it. You can hear from us the rationale why we have why we have a course like this. Overall, it was pretty clear to all the students. There's always room for improvement, right? And like it or not, as teaching staff, we are always still learning, right? So we will learn together and try to make this course a better one, right? But I just feel that I should address um, all these comments in case you have them. So we will move away from this negative feedback because I have made it clear to you guys, right? The first thing is assignment date keep changing. We cannot change our assignment date over the whole product development process, right? One of you guys will basically um, came up with some products and then decide to change the product because it was not good enough, right? So instead of defining the product in week two, you ended up defining the product in week seven. We can't just not give you any marks for your, for your hard work. That's why we always move the assignment dates. We'll see what we can do this time around. We try not to be too fixed on it, but we do need a schedule because you have 13 weeks, you need to graduate, right? So that recommended flow chart is our recommended approach. You're free to change it up, but obviously you have to go through in time, and sometimes those will just linger on. Right? You need to make that clear to us, and it will just be a ad hoc sort of adjustment. Yeah. So we will, we, will, we, will, we will still work closely together. If you need any help in delaying your assignment, let us know. We are a bit more. We try not to be flexible because it, it, we need to be fair to all students, but yet sometimes we just really want you guys to get a case. So we will change that day. So don't be confused by assignment that keep changing, right? If you are a fantastic group and can progress very quickly and finish off the blueprint and the cat drawing by end of week eight, so be it. We are welcome, right? So, and you are able to do so because all the previous year's recordings, lectures recordings are already uploaded. Oh, will be on island. Day. Yeah, will be on island. So you have access to the lectures in the next few weeks, right? Now, feels like theirs is a bigger emphasis on creative innovation than the design process. But mind you, isn't creation, creativity, and innovative thinking part of the design process? If today, if you want to get any job, you cannot just tell your employers that you are familiar with the design pro process, right? As an employer, I would definitely want to find out how creative are you, how much money are you able to bring in to my company. That underlies every single thing. Right. Do you have the capability to bring in more money to my company? That underlies every single thing. Right. So the value that you bring in, are you able to do that as an engineer or as a graduate engineer? It was very demoralizing to be laughed at and see others laugh at. Now, can I please encourage you don't laugh at other people, even though sometimes it can be quite funny, right? It can be quite, and even like sometimes I will chuckle and, but please don't take offense. Right? I mean, at this stage, you need to be. You need to come to terms with the fact that when people laugh at you, it doesn't mean anything at all. Right? You need to be more confident about your own product, back it up with evidence, 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 be data driven, and don't be afraid to be laughed at. Just like the selfie stick. Right? It was being ridiculed like crazy. But who cares if it's a product that works and brings in money, right? So who cares, man? So 
Learn how to manage this yourself. Don't be offended, right? Sometimes it will happen. Maybe Nick will. So, so you know, <laughs> that's something that you need to train yourself as you're working in an environment. You're always going to re receive criticism, like or not, positive, negative. But you need to separate yourself from that as opposed to it's a criticism on your product. Yeah. Right? Obviously, when you come up with the design, the product represents you as much. But we are here to sort of criticize the product, and those people who are giving criticism should emphasize on the product and the thinking process and not off the individual. Right? Okay, just be mindful of that. Um, and so it's a two end thing, right? You yeah. need to improve your EQ, right? Or, and that you also need to be considerate to others. Yeah. Um, and when you work as a team, don't be shy to voice your idea, take it as an opportunity to learn as well. Right? Don't be don't be afraid of being embarrassed and the team members please cooperate and encourage everyone in the group to basically contribute, right? Uh, it will make the whole working environment a lot better. Now, totally biased and shouldn't be called product design if what is wanted is a small plastic gadget. I, I don't mind you guys working on a CNC machine if you can give me the blueprint of a CNC machine by the end of the semester. Right? I don't mind you guys working on an aeroplane or a drone if you can give me the blueprint of the drone by the end of the semester. But why, why do I want blueprint? Because up until this day, right, your employers need to be convinced that you are a detailed person. If so far I can tell you, right, in 203, we never mechanical engineering design one, we never demanded a lot of detail, even though we try to we, we talk so much about it in lectures, we try to tell students, look, you really need to put in all the detailed consideration. When you uh, uh, when you put this um, pulley on the shaft, what is preventing the pulley from falling off? These are the details that we are talking about, but you majority of the students, it was a lot of a lot of assignments. We move on very quickly. We get some of you through. When it comes to 303, Sammy told me that none of the students have basically designed before they build a product. They all build a product first before they start to do all the analysis. So again, we lost the opportunity to show that you guys can be as detailed as possible. Here in Mac 401, we demand the blueprint. We will not let anyone through if we don't show the detailed design. And I can tell you, over the years, when we conduct the unit, it is possible. And students have shown very detailed design throughout I mean, over the over the time over the years when we conduct the unit. We, we, we have only done it twice, right, or three times. But last year the performance was fantastic. Right? We begin to show a lot of detailed design into the into the product. So don't worry, we can do whatever you want. You can come up with a drone, you can come up with a spaceship if you want. Give us the detail. Right? Otherwise, you will not get more than 30% for your technical side of things. Right. We demand detail. It's not because we want it. We try to put a very high expectations, making your life difficult. It's because we know that the employers will want to see it. Right? I'm going to just want to make this very clear. Now, expected a lot. Not a lot was taught. Inconsistent marking and feedback between tutors. Now, it's a bit of both things, right? Here in Mac 401, we basically go according to a textbook that teaches product development process. Right? And the textbook is, I can't remember the name, but it was. It was an island. So I encourage you guys to take a to buy the textbook, but none of you will buy the textbook. I know, right? I think, <laughs> I think there's copies in the library. The copies in the library, yeah. right? We, yeah. we show you how the whole product development process works, which includes how do you come up, how do you be more, how can you be more innovative if you are not a creative person? How can you integrate one concept of yours with another concept of yours? Put them together to build an innovative product. And that is what Japanese are good at, if you, if you know what I'm talking about. They are very, very good at all these things. So the textbook basically teaches you how to do the soft skills in product design, and that is what your learning will be, including your quiz, right? There won't be any exams, because it will just be based on the final report, but your quiz and all the theoretical knowledge it will be based on the soft skill in terms of product design. So, sorry, Martin, yeah? Is there any taught content? The top content, yeah, of course. For the first six weeks, we'll go through all the soft skills development, uh, which includes so some of the big <coughs> things like the creative, the creative aspect. There are heuristics to help you come up with ideas through formulated approaches. Right. So th those are things that will be of good use. You need to learn something definitely. Be, you know, right. Financial models and discount. Financial models, how you create a uh, like financial that. viable product. You know, and please again, like I said, don't get confused and say, "Look, I am here to study engineer." I'm not interested in finance, but if you have that sort of a mindset, it's very hard for you to basically 
it will not do any good to you to, to, to enhance your employability. Shit, man. <coughs> As an engineer, right, it's just a problem solver, right? And so you need to know other people's perspective and what, what affects their decisions. So if you come up with the greatest design technologically speaking, great, but you need something to take off, no one's going to pick that. If there's a bit of a compromise, cost analysis. Right. Okay, all right. Now, the last thing, which is one of the most disappointing comment that I hear from a group of students, including one of the students who nearly failed. Of course, I can't mention the name, but because a lot of uh, um, justification in terms of the mark, he, he got a pass and he, he passed the course. I let him pass the course, which I'm still uh, doubting my decision on this. Regretting and, it. Regretting it. And, and, and that one statement that he made really disappoints me. And, and this is something that I really do not want. If you, if you feel, if you, if you have the same sentiment like this, I can't help it. But I hope that you guys will listen to us and really, really know that and trust us that whatever we are doing here is nothing but to enhance our employability. We 